prepare to embark on a journey through the fascinating world of leader making process. I can spin. Full grown one. In the heart of Nigeria, a hidden artistry awaits your discovery. A craft that turns raw height into pure magic. Join us as we uncover the craft behind Tony Raw Height into fine leader pieces. The process begins with the sourcing of high quality raw materials. Nigerian abundant livestock farming provides an ample source of animal height, essential for the leader work industry. Leather preparation. Once the heights are collected, they undergo a careful preparation, hair and flesh are carefully removed leaving behind clean and workable heights. She actually writes the whole thing, rather the whole process starts from uh, the slaughter slab, where the animals are killed, mm. right? When they, when they are killed, they are skinned, right? After skinning them off, they bring the skins down to the Aussie at a uh, uh, factory. Well, first of all, go to the uh, right? In the first peak, where you know, when they are blood dried, they will get them soaked. Okay. Uh, but it seems at the moment there is nothing inside the pit here, as I can see. These two pits, these two pits in front of us, in front of us, right, are the ones that uh, we get them soaked when they are brought from the from the slaughter slab. But because most of the time they are blood dried, as I told you, when they are brought here, we we'll fix them in here. It stays overnight. We move them into the next pit, which contains the water, carbide, ashes, and potash. Now this pit here? This very one here, yeah. And it makes it very easy for us to scrape off the fork. And you know, the combination is not something that you can just dip in your hands inside. You have to use a hand glove. Is that because of the chemical, the chemical content, yes. oh. especially the carbide? You know, it's so coercive that can actually damage the, skin. damage the skin, yes. So from there, they are moved into the other, uh, what do you call it, wood there, down, where you can see the fork on the ground. So get the fork scraped off. And after scraping it off, we move it into the next pitch. As I told you, that contains the gaba gaba. The waste from the, the, what do you call it, from the poultry farm, right? The feather of not only feather, but the, the droppings. Yes, it served the same purpose. Yes, so from where to be moved into the uh, pit that contains the um, cashier with warm water. Warm water. So this yeah. stage is the tanning process. This, in fact, this is the tannery. The tannery itself, yes. There's though, you know, there are modern tanneries that they use machineries, but ours, you know, is still done the, the, the local farm. way. Yes, yes. yes. The pit that we die, die, you die, what you call it, black no. street wash. This one was black dye. Every leather is being dyed black? No, 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 no. It's not every, but every leather. If you dye it black, either, which means you're going to make use of it as it is in black. But it's not necessary that you have to dye it black because as I told you, it comes in uh, cream color. So from there, if you're going to use it in black, you get it dyed in black. No. If you're going to get it uh, dyed in brown, you go ahead and uh, dye it in brown. But you know, uh, dyeing brown is, you know, it, 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 it contains, rather, it, uh, it, it goes through different colors before it gives brown. First of all, you get black, right? You get uh, a little bit of pink, right? A little bit of uh, yellow. Then I think it gives you brown. It gives you brown. Yes. If, if I mean, as one, one dime middle. In fact, uh, as I told you, almost everything is is, is gotten locally, and uh, most part of this now, as you're saying, is made out of rust, rusted uh, iron. Oh, yes, oh. yes. It comes from the rusted, rusted iron, except for the other colors that are actually gotten from uh, what do you call it from um, from grain stocks. Oh, green, yes, yes. You get them from, you know, uh, corn stock, mm. uh, guinea corn stock, and others. You know, it gives very perfect colors. Oh. Oh, this this stage sounds very precise. Yes. After the tanning process, what, mm. what next? After the tanning process, right, mm. when the leather is fully turned into, rather skin is really 
turned into leather. Yeah. Right, we moved them out, down into the workshop. Okay. As you've shown us this, this, so how do you decide on, or how do you design the pattern of the leather? Do you have a specific pattern already in mind before the process? You know, most of the times, right, mm. as I explained to you there, you know, we have different kinds of leathers. You know, there are the soft ones and there are hard ones. So, anyone you bring out, you know what is specifically going to be used for. Oh, okay. yeah. So, if it is uh, with the soft ones, you know, you use them in making bags, you know, leather wallets and things like that. But if it is the hard one, definitely you are going to make something that is that does not need a soft leather. Maybe like the belt as I explained to you. Yes. So now go into the workshop. You see now, right, I think he has uh, cut almost everything into the various uh, shapes and uh, designs that he wants. So what he's doing now is like giving them a better look. That's folding them out for them not to really be rough by the sides. So that is what he's doing now. You see, he has stressed it with the barrel, you know, and uh, he's going along with the aid of uh, the glue that he applies, rather applied on it. You know, he's not, uh, you know, folding it up to give it a very, you know, excellent look. Yeah. What? These are, these are for shoe. Yes, they, these are for shoe presses, yes. Oh. All of them. Yeah. This is a covered shoe. Okay. Mm, made out of uh, crocodile. Okay. You can see the, the body. Yeah. Yes. That's around the tail area. Uh, so it's already folded somehow. Mm. Mm. This is what I was telling you that we have them in different sizes. Sizes. Okay. Uh, this one is like uh, this one is uh, size 42. Okay. Mm. Oh, that's size 42. So for the product, do you view outsource all of them or you make all of them here? No, no, we are so so many. Okay. Like um, the soil we use, right? We don't make them here. They are always, they are always uh, made in rubber. Yes, yeah, something like this yes, you're holding. So they are made in rubber. They are made with rubber, rubber and we get, buy them in the market. So when we buy them, you know, they come in sheets bigger sheets mm. so we get them put into the various sizes and shapes that we really desire to make use of yeah what are the major challenges you face mm. or no well the major challenges right mm. the first one as i always say right mm. is the one that uh, the university authority blocked our entrance from the other end which is actually you know the entrance that actually you know that has been there for ages in fact before, even before the university, right, that's the main road that comes into the Naraguta area. So we don't know what happened, you know, since uh, after, you know, the crisis in 2008. They just came and blocked the entrance and uh, with that, you know, it's really a challenge for us. And instead of them to even raise a wall, right, which we feel if it's actually a wall is different from, you know, giving pavements. I know those pavements, right, are a kind of a sign that shows, right, if you are a new person there, right, is a sign that if you cross to the other, very really red flag, you know, which we were not really happy with. So that's one of the major uh, challenges we have. Then the second is, um, you know, most of the times we make use of uh, electricity that's in the workshop. Mm -hmm. If we're actually making shoes or slippers, where before, right, where you come actually, where you come to the shop here. You know, you see a variety of things that you just pick up and buy and go. But now, right, because of all those, uh, you know, challenges, or rather that very challenge, we don't make to keep. Because it's not everybody that is free, that rather that enjoys, or rather that feels free, or feels safe to come here. So when you come, you have to just uh, make an order, place an order, then we produce and uh, send it to you wherever you are. As you can see, this is a full uh, crocodile skin, full real crocodile. Uh, wow. It has undergone all those processes in the, at the tannery there. Yeah, so it's now very ready for us to use. And this one, as it is very hard like this, we are using it in making uh, bags. Yes. Oh, no. That one. 
This is another reptile. This is a python skin. A real, real python. Wow. Well, the full one. Full grown one, really. <laughs> As you can see, this one is quite, it's quite black and uh, big at the same time. <laughs> but yes. You, you, you spikes should generally be quite large. Yes, yes. We use this in uh, making uh, maybe bags, shoes, or whatever that comes our way. Yes. And we also use um, him. As you can see, this is an ostrich skin. A little ostrich. Yes. You see? From this way, you can see this side. This is the this is the neck. You know, they always, they always have long necks. So this is the neck part. This is the men body. See? This is the men body, yes. So these are majorly the ones that uh, the skins that we actually use. As you can see, right, this one too is, you know, it comes in the cream color. Yeah. So from this very cream color, we can get it dyed into any other color that we want. Can you just tell a little about the background of how this is and how it started? Well, it's really a long uh, story. Mm. You know, the whole trade was started by my grandfather. And I think he started it a long way back, I think in 1935. Why not? With, his, with the help of uh, his uh, younger brother, they started it together. After that, I think uh, we came back to our parents. Right, our parents joined in with the tribe. Our parents also came back to us. We also joined in. So, it's more like a generation of. Yes, it's like uh, we are the third generation in the whole business. Yes, and um, you know, at first, right, it started as a family business, but later. Right, it turned into you know a place where we actually you know do our very best to reduce those that don't know that does not have work on the streets. I think so far right, within and outside Nigeria we've trained more than five thousand people. You know, some came from Cameroon, some from uh, Niger, some from Chad, some even from uh, Burkina Faso they came and uh, left the trade here. So they, most of them have gone back to their countries, which they are actually you know, uh, living their lives, with their families, you know, in very good life with their families at the moment. What's the message you want to convey to people watching right now, mostly African businesses? All I need to say out now is nothing but um, so ever in I mean is in the, in the trade, right? You should keep to promises, as I said which is the key to a successful business at any level. So what I feel right, everyone should always be you know, himself. He should be available at all the time. He should keep to promises, right? That uh, whatsoever is not supposed to do, he shouldn't be doing. Thank you so much for sharing so much insight and passion about um, leader work in Nigeria. Um, and if you want to outsource material, do you sell materials? Sure, we do for those that are interested. And anybody that is interested can come around and uh, we sell it out to him. Whosoever has interest in it, he should come and uh, make a partnership and uh, continue with the trade together. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Awesome. So guys, thank you for joining us on this episode from Rawhide to Masterpiece, as you can see. This is Masterpiece, as you can see. And thank you for joining us on this leather work. Um, so as we did here so i'll drop your details below the video yeah. so you can reach out to him for more details and how you can contact him and also you sell products so like your shoes and all sure, of that sure. yeah so you can get them and i'll tell that so if you enjoyed this video don't like and subscribe i'll see you in the next episode bye for now